Uh, so I want to welcome everybody here uh, to my live YouTube show today about how to practice at home during these difficult times with the COVID-19 virus uh, that's making a lot of us like me have to stay home and we're not in total lockdown so we can go to the store and, and go shopping uh, for food and stuff like that uh, but pretty much everything else is shut down. Uh, take this thing seriously. Uh, try to stay away from people as much as you can. And uh, when you get a chance, uh, if you're like me, uh, you don't want to sit and watch the news all day. So it's a good time to work on the mechanics of your golf swing. And if, I also have a net set up outside so I can hit some balls off a mat into a net, which I'll be making some videos coming up. I'm uh, not really sure how long this thing's going to last, but, uh, you know, I'm saying anywhere from two to six weeks. So uh, we're going to have a lot of time to work on the game, work on the swing. We're going to have some shows on putting. Uh, I also want to say hi to Tony Griffin, who teaches my setup for impact golf swing up in Sanford, North Carolina, who does a great job uh, with lessons and uh, one day schools. He's also going to be helping me if it's possible uh, the first uh, days of the first days of May uh, to teach a learn and play school up there. Uh, let's hope that this virus passes through and we can get back to improving our golf games outside. Uh, all that info can be found on the website at learninggolf.tv. And I'm going to talk today about a couple things of what you can be doing uh, this time of being stuck at home and how you can work towards improving your golf game. And you can see here on YouTube, on my channel, there's a lot of videos going step-by-step step through my learning program. It's a seven-step system where I talk about grip and how to hold the club. So this is a time that you can be solidifying your setup routine and going through as I teach in my program. I start with the grip, how to hold the club in my leading hand. And I'm really feeling the position where it's really fitting into my hand. It's not in the fingers like that but it's really fitting more into my hand. You can see that if you search single plane grip, uh, you'll find that video where I go through step by step. But I'm trying to fit the hand in that position, and I'm also matching the hand up with the club head to make sure that, for me, I'm in a neutral position. Now, one of the beauties of my single plane setup for impact method is that I customize it to fit each individual instead of forcing you to hold the club like I do uh, in a neutral position, I'm looking for the fastest improvement possible. And so when we work with a student, uh, we're looking towards helping you improve your game as you leave the lesson or as you leave the school. We want you hitting the ball better, not to send you off and say, hey, you need to practice for the rest of your, you know, the, a year or two years and uh, go through all the drills and have to work on everything and hopefully you improve later. I want you to improve and to keep improving. And that's what the drills and system are designed to do and that you can customize. So some of you, if you put your hands on in a neutral position or the leading hand and you bring the club down and the club, the club face is wide open like that, you're probably somebody that's used to having what's called a stronger leading hand position. So for you, the club may be like this when the back hand's flat and the toe is up a little bit, uh, that would be your position at setup. We just want to keep doing it the same every time we put our hands on the club so that we can uh, make sure that the hands are always the same on the golf club in the same position and that the club's fitting a little bit more in the palm of the hand than it is in the fingers. And so if you're somebody copying Bryson DeChambeau, who's very close to what I teach as far as his concept, uh, he's a little bit more diagonally through the hand. This will limit a lot of the wrist cocking ability in the swing. And again, I don't recommend you exactly copying any other person. Uh, what we want to do is set up in a position that's as close as possible to where we're going to be an impact. So I'm going to go through these things. And then at the end, I'm going to open it up for questions. So you can think about any questions that come up and I'll check after I talk about this grip. Uh, section will take a little break and you can ask me any questions about the grip and then uh, we'll go through setup and then I'll talk about impact and then how you should be practicing 
going forward in this time when you're stuck at home, some of the things that you can do. As always, you can refer to my videos here on YouTube. I have it's a step-by-step -step learning program. Or if you're able, you can support me uh, by going to my website and joining my inexpensive membership program, which also allows you to send in videos for my review. A lot of people are sending in videos at the current time. Uh, sometimes drill one, drill two, it doesn't matter. Uh, but they're sending in videos so that I can give feedback as to what's going on. So as, as we're getting set up, once you have the lead hand in position, uh, what I like to do for putting the trailing hand on the golf club, it's important that we're going to get the hand in a position and the arm in a position where it's not going to have to pronate in order to square the club face or rotate, as most people understand it. And so we're getting the hand in a position where it's rotated this way, and I'm going to slide the hand in underneath the club so it's in a position where the arm's not going to have to have any pronation in order to square the club face. And so if you look at it from the down the line view, when I'm putting the hand in, I'm trying to make sure as part of the setup also that the right shoulder, trailing shoulder is going to stay back. And I slide the hand in from underneath like that. And so if you look at my hand position there, you can see also that it's running kind of across the palm of the hand. Of course, the fingers wrap around, uh, and this is a position where the goal is that it will be easy to square the club face through impact so that we can concentrate on other issues. So that's a short version of how I go about working on holding the golf club and checking to see that I do it the same every time. Um, any questions about the grip, go ahead and type them in, but it's just basically fitting together like this. I recommend more of an overlapping grip and it's not an overlapping grip where I'm trying to stick the fingers in somehow in between. It just rides, the little finger just rides on top like that and that's it. At the same time, if you're comfortable with an interlocking grip, as long as the orientation of your hands does not change, uh, that's fine, as is 10 finger, as long as there's not space between the hands. So I'm gonna talk about setup in a second. Are there any questions about the grip? Okay, so as far as grip size is concerned, this is a jumbo max. I'm gonna zoom, I'll come in closer here. I don't know if you can see it. The light's not really there. Let's go back a little bit. So this is a Jumbo Max Ultra Light Grip. And so this is, I've been using this for a short time now. This is a Jumbo Max Ultra Light. And this is the small size, which fits my hand pretty well. I've, I've also used the medium. So for my hand size, which when I measure it here from the wrist crease to the tip of the longest finger is eight inches. And this, for me, for that size, it would fit medium or small in the jumbo max grip. So if you look at other grips that say they're jumbo or mid-size, that's not what this is. This is a lot thicker. I found through testing that this works better for most of my customers. But as always, the one question, put them on two clubs first and uh, practice a little bit with them. The beauty of these things is that they're very light. They're only about 48 grams, which is the same size as a normal weight. So uh, it doesn't mess up the balance of your golf club. Do not get the heavier version. Um, for most people, it's much too heavy. It puts too much weight at this end of the grip, and that's going to cause issues. So, but try it. I have, I have guys uh, who prefer a normal golf grip, and it's about great uh, doing that. And so there's no reason, you know, for everybody to go out and change your grips. Uh, but if you're in the market, you're, you're really into this. Uh, the Jumbo Max Ultra Lights are the way to go. Uh, they do have, sometimes some grips are not available. Uh, so, you know, I think most people I would err on the side of a little bit thicker as opposed to thinner. But again, just please try it first. I know it's a little bit of an effort to order one or two grips unless you're absolutely sure you want to go with it. Uh, you can email me at learninggolf.tv at gmail.com or send it through the website, the contact form with your hand size, and I'll also make a recommendation there.
Yeah, hey, uh, Leon, uh, those grips, uh, the GGA grips are somewhat thinner. Uh, they put uh, wraps uh, underneath, and their formula for grip size is somewhat thinner than what I recommend. And I've done this through testing on flight scope with a lot of my students, and the thicker grips seem to provide a lot more stability. And I know they say more distance, but what I see is more consistency, more straighter golf shots. Uh, club head speed in my test has been the same for most people. I have had a number of people that immediately start hitting the ball much better with the Jumbo Max Ultra Light grips. So that's why I recommend them. The GGA grips are uh, basically a standard grip with the markings on it. I don't put, I don't use the markings either when I put my hands on. So some people like that. Um, that grip, if you follow the markings, forces you to put your hands on the club. Uh, in a neutral position, uh, which I'm not an advocate of, unless that, you know, if you've always had a neutral leading hand grip, that's fine, but I'm looking for faster improvement. And if you look at the guys playing on tour, you'll see everywhere from a neutral to a very strong grip position for the people. And so uh, it's not worth sacrificing one, two years to possibly maybe improve. In most cases, I see people who go from a strong grip to a neutral grip, who never improve and end up after a year or two wasted going back to another grip. Yeah, so better golf at 72 is Tony. Uh, and Tony's the guy, and that's another reason I tell people at my schools, Tony uses, uh, I think, a fairly standard grip. It may be slightly larger. Uh, you know, and that's, again, that's why I say try the grips first before or doing something else. So give them a shot first to make sure. Yeah, hey, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna get into swing issues like that, Ray, uh, in a little bit. That will be addressed when I talk about impact. And get moving on then to setup, which I've touched on a little bit. Part of the setup is going ahead and putting the hands on the club and I like to look at my position and you, and I'm looking at the back of the hand versus the club face and looking at the position. So if you tend to be a little bit stronger, that's fine. You can use this or you can make your own system for putting the hands on the golf club just so it's always the same. I like to check it. I'll feel the club here at my side and feeling where it fits in my hand. And then when I'm getting into my setup position, I'm going to check my aim. So I use the club to aim the butt of the club at the target. So I kind of sight over the club like this. Or if you're looking here down the line, not sure how the camera's aligned here, but I'm sighting down the club like that. And then what I'm going to do is line my feet up with the club. So I have the parallel line to the target. And then what I'm going to do, I'll show you from this side first. Then what I'm going to do is looking at my ball position. The ball's a little bit forward of middle. I'm going to bend forward from my hips and I'm gonna move my leading hip over the leading foot, just a couple inches like that. And that's also putting me in a little bit more tilted position with my upper body away from the target. So it's gonna look like this. And then I'm reaching in from underneath. And again, you can see this if you search YouTube for my single plane setup video, it's on there. It goes through step by step. I'm trying to put myself in a good position for impact. And if you look at the top players in the world, you're going to see everybody at impact. Their head is back over the center of their stance. So the back, the center of my stance and the back is here between the trailing foot and the center of my stance is where my head position would be. And you're going to see the hips are always moved out more over the leading foot. So I just start in that position there. And if you look here from down the line, again, I'm going to, once I have my grip and ball position, I'm going to bend forward from the hips, trying to keep the spine neutral, move the hips over, club comes down, and I try to make sure my trailing shoulder stays back and I'm gonna reach in underneath. So I'm in a position, I also feel for me, I feel a little bit of contact with my upper arm here against my body. So it looks like that. And then from that position, of course, I'm set up with the club on the same plane 
as my trailing arm. If you, I'm sure most of you have seen my videos, but that's the main point from this viewpoint that I do not have to worry about compensating for moving from this position setup, that's a conventional setup, to here at impact. I'm just gonna set up on the same plane that I'm going to be on at impact. My weight is actually, you see the hips are moved forward, but because the upper body's back, my weight still feels about 50-50 on each foot. From front to back, the weight distribution is pretty even between the balls of my feet and the heels, as if I was standing here talking to somebody. Uh, that's, that's just important that gets asked. It's a question that's asked a lot is weight distribution. Uh, focus on the setup, watch the setup video. It's much more detailed. And again, it's all on the website. If you are interested in supporting my program, you can visit learninggolf.tv and it's very inexpensive to get you started. If you want to take the free route, which is fine, you can do that over here on YouTube. So let me see if there's any questions. Um, so an open stance, uh, you could be, uh, if you're, if you're hitting a little bit descending into impact a few degrees, the stance could be slightly open. I would prefer an open stance versus a square or uh, not square, but a closed stance. Uh, a square stance uh, will work fine as long if you have a zero impact position where the club's not descending or ascending. Uh, if the club is slightly moving down, then you would slightly say uh, five to 10 yards, the feet a little bit open. But again, I much prefer open uh, versus closed. Uh, that, and that's an important point. Thanks, Wild Otter, good to hear. The belt that I use is actually one, uh, I'm not really uh, into such a fashion thing here. I just want to make sure that it holds my pants up so I don't get in trouble there. Uh, but it should be tight enough that you can still breathe as well. Any other questions about the setup? So. Getting into the most important parts here, uh, what we're going to talk about is impact is obviously the moment of truth. The most important part of any golf swing is what the club's doing through impact. And this in every school that I teach, the majority of instruction is based around achieving a pro-like impact. And this is the most important for any golf swing, any method. And I know with most golf methods, what you're doing is spending a lot of time trying to get in a certain position at the top of the swing. I see people working on their takeaway and their backswing and their weight transfer and a thousand other things, squaring the club through impact and all kinds of things like that. The setup that I teach puts you in a position where you need to be at impact with the golf club and the body in a much closer position to where it needs to be versus conventional golf where you're set up uh, pretty much uh, like this with the hips in a centered position as well as the head and with very little tilt here. And then you're expected to move the hips over and turn them and you're gonna have more tilted impact. And at the same time, you're going from a position of the hands low to the higher plane at impact as well as trying to square the club face because of the trailing hand being a little bit on top of the grip coming into impact. So, so because the hands on top of the grip at setup, it makes it more difficult as I talked about earlier to square the club face. And so we're setting up for impact and uh, this method is completely customizable to fit each person. But I found through uh, my schools that once people get set up in the right position, so focus on getting the setup correct. And if you're part of my membership program, which again, it's on the lifetime memberships on sale now in this time as there's so many people at home, uh, you can have a one-time payment, $99.98. It's $50 off. And 
I want you to take advantage of it if you can, because it allows you to also send in video of your setup, uh, doing the drills. It gives you full access. You can ask me questions by email. And for those of you that can, I know it's a tough time and watch the YouTube videos. You can also put in comments there and I'm answering all reasonable questions and comments. So I'm here to support you either way. Uh, if you can, my membership program is a great value. And uh, we're gonna talk now about impact, which is step three in my program. And the main idea here, what I want you to understand, that is in order to make pro-like impact, we need to have the grip leading the club head as the club head moves through impact. And there's four reasons that we need to do that. And you can pick up a golf club now if you pick up a golf club and you have one handy, uh, you, can, you can see what I'm talking about here very simply. And when the grip is leading the club head through impact, what I want you to do is to look at the club rotation. So if the grip is leading, you don't even have to move anything. If the grip is leading the club head, watch the club and how square it stays through impact. So I'm gonna do it this way so my body's turning I want you to watch, if you watch the club head move, you're gonna see there's very little rotation or face rotation through impact. So it'll look like this if I move closer. And because of the camera position, uh, it does look like more rotation than there is, but you can do this yourself and you'll be able to see it, that really it's possible to keep that club face pretty square all the way through the impact zone. And certainly there's still a little bit of rotation there. But if you compare that to what I see most people, and this is the biggest problem, and this is an answer to the question earlier about hitting fat and hitting thin as well, uh, but it's also hitting right and hitting left, that the club, you can see when the club head is passing the hands, you see a lot of face rotation. When it's not, you see very little face rotation. That's why there's nobody you'll see on any of the major tours who at impact has the club head passing their hands on iron shots from the ground. If you move the club forward with a driver, uh, then you'll see in some cases that the hands are fairly even with the club head at impact, but you're still not gonna see that, uh, obviously. And that's the biggest problem that I see in golf. So the first thing is if you do this with the club, and look at the face of the club, you're going to see that there's very little face rotation. The second point is that the golf club, when we do this, as long as the club head is trailing behind the grip or the grip is leading the club at same thing, uh, you can see as long as it's leading, if I held it like a pendulum, you'll see that the club head's moving down as long as the grip is leading. And so, if the grip's leading, you'd say, well, it's moving down, coming into impact. But at the same time, if the body is, continues to turn through impact, the shoulder, the leading shoulder is actually pulling. So the hand is pulling up. And what that creates is a long flat spot through impact. That's another reason all the tour players are so consistent in their ball striking because of their body rotation. They're not trying to pull up. So we don't want to pull up, but if, we're, if our body continues to turn through impact, you're creating a longer flat spot through impact. So if you looked, if you looked here, let me see if you can see this. If you looked here, so the club's coming in, it's going through impact, it's not very flat there. So it's making a flat spot, and the top players are about eight inches, eight to 10 inches of flat spot. Now again, uh, we call it a flat spot. It's probably not perfectly flat, but it's a very shallow curve or arc through impact as opposed to what most people are again doing. So you can see this is the, the, the difference is here it's coming down and up. So the impact area, you have a very small margin where you can hit the ball properly. And the third reason, the third thing that you could see here is that as the club's coming in, so it's coming from inside to the target line, what you can actually do, what you could see 
is the club heads coming in. As it's coming in though, the grip because of the body rotation is being pulled to the inside. So it's leading and it keeps the club from going out. And it actually, with the effect of the flat spot, makes for a straighter path through impact as well. So uh, it should be pretty obvious why we want to improve our impact position. The fourth reason is also quite simple to understand is that and you can put a ball on a countertop, but if the shaft of the club here is even at impact, you can see that impact would be made on the lower part of the face. If I move the shaft forward, now I'm hitting the middle of the face. So some of you might say, what if the ball's on a tee or what if it's sitting up nice in the fairway, then it's really not so important. But again, in that situation, people hitting off a tee on a par three or on perfect fairways, you still have the issue of the face opening and closing through impact or a lot of face rotation. So we need to have the hands leading regardless of how good a lie you have. So uh, to do that and to train that, we're gonna get into the drills in a moment, how we work on that. But all I want you to do is just practice, make some, make this motion, trying to make this motion where the club face is square and the path is pretty straight. I can use the path. I don't know if you can, yeah, you can see the edge of the carpet here and you can see I can practice along that. And you need to work on impact the most of anything. And my ball striking drill number one will address that. So uh, driver shots, so that gets into also if, the, if you're slicing a driver, there's something that's making the club face open and it's probably affecting the path as well. I would look at your setup position and make sure that the trailing arm is not above. So when I'm looking from down the line, you see how you can see the grip here below the trailing arm. What happens is as you come in, to impact, everybody's in this alignment and impact, but you can see what happened, the club face has opened. So if we look at the driver, you'd see from, from this setup position, when I come in here, that the club face is now open. So you can fix that by the setup, and at the same time, making sure that your upper body's not in an open position. We need to see that the hips are forward as I talked about earlier, but also that we're reaching in from underneath and this trailing shoulder is staying back off the ball. And so the non-rotational position will help you there as well then as the drills uh, that I just talked about for improving impact. So you're coming in open, first place to look at is grip. If the setup is okay, uh, you may need to uh, strengthen the leading hand slightly. That's the easy, that's an easy correction, but first make sure that this alignment, and this is something a lot of people overlook is getting this setup look and they struggle with this for the first six months to a year. In my schools, uh, that's something often it takes two into the second day of a three day school to get everybody setting up perfectly. And it's hard to believe because you think it looks so easy, but it's really, it's something that needs to be worked on so you put yourself in a position where you no longer need to manipulate in order to hit the ball straight. I would work with and check the irons first. In a lot of cases, the irons are going to be open also, which is the slice with the driver, but you don't notice it because the ball still goes pretty straight. It just flies higher and you're losing distance anyway. And that's, uh, I see that on my flight scope a lot when I work with people, the driver slicing uh, the seven irons high and fairly straight, but the flight scope says the face is seven degrees open and the path is six degrees to the left and then the ball flies straight. So once we get it squared up and get the setup and everything correct, uh, then what you do is you see that uh, the ball goes much farther and straight. Um, so, yeah, the uh, position of uh, the grade school teaches the Mo Norman swing and copying exactly what Mo has done. And I taught with them 
uh, for a couple of years and taught the Monormand swing also for many years, taught for natural golf, have done, been involved with the concept for a long time. I myself, if you watch my videos when I'm getting set up, I'm starting with the iron a little bit back behind the ball. In working with people for over 20 years though with this concept, I find that there's really, it doesn't seem to help people uh, very much to have it back or not. So I really leave that up to the individual. You can certainly start there. And uh, I do, I start slightly back uh, behind the ball, something like that. And uh, I think with a driver, I see more people that that would help uh, because of the getting the body positioned at setup. But again, uh, it's an individual thing. It's nothing that, again, it's about impact. So we can talk about a lot of different things, uh, the setup, but starting whether you start here or here, uh, it's going to be little, have little to no effect on your impact position, in my opinion. Um, looking at yeah, Harry, um, yeah, looking, uh, I would have to look at the swing. In, in a lot of cases, because of, I'll, I'll move this way, because of the extreme distance from the ball that, that they teach, uh, they're very far away copying Mo. And you saw for Mo to make good impact, what he had to do is to move down closer to the ball. So if you watch his head, he dropped down about six inches uh, into the ball. And that's what allowed him to make such great impact. So he's dropping down, the knees were bent, and that gave space. So if you set up closer to the ball, uh, but you still move down, then what you're doing is you're running out of space. And so I try to get people, and I think it's much easier and much better on the back and the body uh, to try to stay as level as possible. So I'm looking at the hips staying level, and I'm looking at the upper body staying as level as possible. From there, we try to find your distance from the ball. Where does the club strike the ground uh, and how far away is that from your toe line. So if you're getting set up here and I make some swings, I see I'm trying to stay level and I would see where the clubs, the clubs making contact here. And then when you get used to that, of course the club needs to fit the, for that line or for that distance from the ball. So if you move closer, eventually you're going to need more upright clubs. A lot of clubs can be adjusted that way. I would make it a gradual process. Uh, it's certainly much easier to swing a golf club when we're more upright as opposed to getting farther away. One thing also from being so far away, it's very difficult to get the proper impact parameters that uh, I talked about earlier. And it's also, uh, you, I saw it as the biggest problem of people trying to copy Mo is to learn Mo's compensation from being too far from the ball to move down and to get that exact amount uh, is very, very difficult. At the same time, if we stand too close, we have to make space. So we're looking for the middle ground where all I have to do is turn back and turn through. I like to talk about just, just this idea. We want it to be as simple as possible is that we're just gonna turn back, rotate through. It's not, I'm gonna turn turn back and have to move. You can see it here, I'm gonna turn back and then have to move out here to hit the ball. Uh, that's what makes swinging like Mo so impossible that nobody's ever successfully copied Mo. So at least I haven't seen him on tour, so I don't know. Hey, Grant, uh, yeah, so grip pressure is something. Uh, grip pressure, I have about a medium grip pressure, so a scale of 1 to 10, I would say about 4 or 5. So I'm not a fan of trying to grip tight. That creates tension in the arms. I see no need for it. Um, some of you with thinner grips uh, you know, may need to hold on tighter, uh, but if you have the right size grip that fits in your hands, I think you can relax and it's going to make it uh, pretty uh, easy to hold on to the golf club without having to squeeze. For chipping, 
In pitching, I'm at very light. I'd be probably about a three on a scale of one to ten. If I missed anybody, type it in again. Uh, I'm going to talk then about the drills and how I would practice, and then we'll see if there's any additional questions, and then I'll let you guys go on and start practicing. I'm going to be making videos and doing a number of live shows on different topics coming up. So if you have any ideas or something you'd like to see, uh, type them in the comments or email me at learninggolf.tv at learning, learninggolf.tv at gmail.com. Put them in the comments below. Also, please, uh, comments and your likes, hitting the thumbs up button help. And if you like this, subscribe. Click the subscribe button below and uh, accept notifications to get notified when new videos or new live shows are going to come on. And that helps my channel also uh, very much. Uh, if you can, you can also support me by becoming a member of my website, uh, which also allows you to send in videos for my review. Uh, lifetime memberships are on sale. It's very inexpensive when you compare it to other similar opportunity. So, how I like to practice, and you've seen if you've seen my drills videos, they are available on YouTube. And I believe now I'm going to be doing a number of live shows. I want to help you guys as much as I can, whether you're a do it yourself or want to do it for free, that's fine. Uh, or if you join my membership program, uh, then you'll be able to send in videos. And there's a lot more content that you can view. So looking here, when we talk about once I'm in my setup position, what I would have you do at home is practice moving, moving the club and trying to keep it as low as we go through as possible. To do that, if you look at my drill number one, I have you taking the club back to here. So we're, we're making our swing to this position here. And then I have you keep the club there as we turn. And I use the feet, legs, and hips to start turning towards the target and get my body to the impact position. So my body's gonna be turned my leading leg is straightening as the club comes through impact. And then I try to get the club to this position here with the club base pretty square and low to the ground and the grip just past my leading leg. When I talk about the impact position with the body, what you'll see is this, that I'm from the setup position, all I'm going to do, keep the clubs here. I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna use my feet and legs to turn my hips. It's gonna also turn my upper body. And for me, this is going to be my impact position. And I'm gonna be trying to get in that impact position as the clubs come in. So I wanna be there now and then make impact because the club moves so quickly from here to impact. I need to see that all the drills that I'm getting this position. I'm gonna show you from here, from down the line. I want you to see that I'm getting in that impact turned position before the club gets there. So as we're working on drill number one and then ball striking drill number one, uh, we're working here to get from here. And as I get near the end of the backswing, which is about right here, I'm actually gonna start with the feet, legs, and hips I'm gonna stop turning so I can get to the impact position with my body before the club gets there. So I'll move in this speed here, turn, impact, and I'll be able to look at impact and see if the club face is square. So if you come into impact and you see you're out of position and the club face isn't square, then you need to make sure you're set up. And you need to also make sure that the hips are turning so the trailing hips not moving or sliding back, that it's turning in. So you can see it's turning in. So you can practice that, turning in. And I can look at myself now. I can watch myself on the video that I'm making. So you can set up an iPad in front of you on the ground that shoots back this way. So you can see it yourself like a mirror or in front of a mirror. I like to be able to look down here and see that I'm turning the, everything's moving, my head stays in position, and then I turn, I'm still in position. So you see my head staying through the whole thing level. 
my hips are staying level. I'm practicing that motion. So the easiest way to improve something, especially practicing at home, is to do repetitions of it as often as possible, but perfect repetitions. So you don't have to do this for hours. If you do this for five or 10 minutes, pick up a golf club and you move, you practice moving. This would be ball striking drill one then is simply moving from here to here. And I can check myself. So I want you to hold this position for three seconds when you're done so you can check to see that the grip is not back this way. So if, I'm, if I was gonna do that, it's a very short swing, hold to finish. Hold to finish. And then I can go to a ball and do the same thing. So I can check the finish. So what you can also do then is what I showed you earlier, practice making some swings. Uh, move the club across the ground. It's in a straight line. The face is square, but use your body to make this motion. Use the body to turn. My body's moving my arms. I'm not using my hands. I'm not using my arm. My body's moving the club. And then you can make some swings. And just practice that. So practicing that with feedback, you're improving your impact position. In these times, if you're like me, you can't go out to the golf course. Uh, you're stuck at home for a while. You don't even know how long. Uh, you can still practice the most important part of the swing, which is through impact. So I'm going to answer your questions. Uh, again, if you want to support me, visit my website, learninggolf.tv. I also have some couple schools coming up. Hopefully, we don't know what the situation is. If you're interested in reserving a spot, you do not have to pay. You can reserve a spot, uh, and I'll contact you a couple weeks, two or three weeks before the school and then we'll make a determination. It could be the school dates are all pushed back. Again, we're in a state of limbo at the moment. So I do have a few signups for the North Carolina school tentatively already. So uh, there's a few spots left and uh, that's a school also I can drive up to. So if you're in driving distance, it's probably not as big a risk, but we have to wait and see what the situation is gonna be. Let me see what questions we have. So the uh, playing the ball off the trailing foot uh, for a chip shot, that's fine. So if you want to play it off the trailing foot, if you played a full swing off a trailing foot, uh, you would have to stand very open. So a lot of people use that as a Band-Aid where uh, because they're releasing early, they need to play the ball back. Uh, again, there's possibilities where you could do that. Uh, I wouldn't advise it uh, if it's something you've done your whole life. Uh, you can certainly set up uh, in my setup for impact method that way uh, with the ball off, but you would need to probably be very open as well as playing it off the back of your foot. So it'd be very, very open, but you could still have that alignment of the club and also get the effect of square. I just think for most people, it's going to be difficult to uh, find the right aim of your feet with that ball position. The leading forearm uh, is going to go through this motion. So if you held the golf club in front of you like this, all that's what's going to happen, it's going to pronate this way, which is rotate. And from a neutral grip position, it's going to do about 90 degrees. So it's just going to rotate back as we cock the wrist and we come back in. And it should naturally rotate due to the trailing arm bending and straightening, uh, but it's going through that rotation. And you don't really, you don't want to hinder that or keep that from happening. Uh, if you just let it do, it's a very natural motion, just, just like this. If you're gonna hit something at the back of your hand, you're not gonna try to keep it from rotating. It's going to have 
the natural rotation. And again, that's in the drills. As you do drills one, two, and three, you can go from there. Um, short shots, all I can do in here, Dallas fan, is what I did a minute ago where, I, where I'm just doing, I hit it into this beanbag-like chair. I don't, I guess I can get some kind of net in here. My net's outside, so I'm going to be doing some videos and maybe even a live show from outside in the backyard because I have a net and a mat there. But if I'm doing ball strike and go one, it'd be something like that. And I would always be doing some practice swings where I'm trying to see that I get this motion that I just talked about from my setup. Hold the finish. Hold the finish. And the club looks pretty to me there. Uh-oh, I'm going to get in trouble now. Um, yeah, I would never, uh, as far as uh, the width of the stance, I think that uh, for most people to enable you to be able to turn, it's going to be about hip width to shoulder width. I wouldn't get much wider than that. Uh, even with the driver, uh, most stance was really wide, and I see that's as a reason that most people struggle who try to uh, copy a swing and lose distance as well. The extreme distance from the ball, but also the very the very wide stance makes it very uncomfortable and very difficult to turn the body, which of course ends up with a loss of club head speed. I also don't see it helping accuracy. So I'm a fan of uh, a comfortable width so that I can turn. I need to be able to turn on the back swing and turn on the through swing. I don't want to restrict anything that helps us create speed. And it also helps with accuracy because we need to get the more turned that we can comfortably get through impact the better that we can produce a great impact position. So don't restrict, uh, try to set up properly, and then learn to move properly through impact. Uh, coming over the top, uh, it's very easy that uh, the setup position that's been taught uh, for over 100 years in golf is the shoulders, uh, the arms hanging down from the shoulders and the trailing arm on top of the club like this. And so what happens is we get in a position at the top where the club for most people is open. And as they come down, the only way to get the ball to the target is to come over the top. So it's really a compensation for an open club face uh, due to a poor setup position. Conventional golf really hasn't worked for people. And, of course, the guys on TV are fantastic, but they're one-tenth, not even one-tenth of one percent of golfers can do what they do. They learned it as a kid, as did I. I started golf conventionally and did quite well for over 30 years. And I can tell you with certainty that uh, switching to, to this concept is the best thing that I ever did, even though changing took me about six months. Uh, I was much better off setting up this way, even though I didn't come over the top. I've taught people for over 24 years. I can tell you, getting the setup correct and doing the drills, you'll cure over the top very easily. Hey, Grant. Uh, yeah, for the, uh, I think they're all uh, similar. If we're gonna. If we're going to throw a ball, you can see the transfer of the weight and the moving, usually uh, going from bent to straighter legs, going through, especially the lead leg. Uh, you could be throwing side arm. That would be the same thing, if whether it's hitting a tennis ball. It's all an athletic motion. It all starts from the ground and uses body rotation uh, to create speed, whether it's, whether it's baseball and the, the motion. If you watch the hips, if you watch the hands leading, uh, the body rotation creates speed. And uh, it's very clear to, to see that the same motion, it really starts from the ground up using the feet, legs, hips, and then upper torso. And uh, it's all similar. So you could, and I, I see a lot of people trying to keep their trailing foot flat on the ground through impact, which to me 
is one of the craziest things that you can do. It'd be like saying, go ahead and throw a ball and keep your trailing heel down. So it's very restrictive, and I don't see it helping anybody uh, hit better golf shots. Yeah, I keep the uh, left arm as far as do I keep it straight. I keep I keep it straight. It is relaxed, so I, I'll, I'll keep it here. And if I get up at the top, if the, you know, if it's slightly bent, as long as when I come down, uh, we're not coming down with the, the arm, the leading arm bent. So that's something I see with people who release early. But we can see, again, uh, doing the drills, we're keeping it straight. It's not stiff. It shouldn't be stiff or tight. And even in the setup position, even though we're setting up in this uncocked position here like this, it's, it's not uncomfortable. So it's not stiff. So guys, thanks a lot for watching. Any comments or questions, put them in the box below. And I'll be having these quite often. So stay tuned to my channel. Again, if you can uh, support me uh, watch the videos uh, like all your likes help comments help on all my videos uh, and the learning program is also on youtube so you can uh, look for any part you want grip setup uh, just search my channel for that uh, my website again there's inexpensive membership which allows you to view my entire program as well as submit questions and videos for my review it's free to submit videos through the v1 golf app and you can check out my school schedule, which everything's tentative right now, thanks to this virus uh, that's going through. And uh, you can tentatively sign up or, or reserve a spot, and then we'll decide if the school's gonna take place then at a later date. Uh, again, be safe, uh, social distancing uh, is important, and we need to get this thing through as quickly as possible. So take care, stay healthy, Again, send me any questions by email or here through YouTube. So thank you very much. I hope you have a great day.